Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is cheap, quick, and easy. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Katie and Beth. So Katie, tell us about your recipe. Okay, I will. Um, this recipe that I have is for black bean burrito wraps, and I found it on the website Taste of Home. And it is, it's just so simple. So um, you basically just take some chopped up pepper. They use green pepper. I use either jalapeno or habanero or a combination because I like spicy stuff, but you can use whatever kind of pepper you want and some chopped up onion and you saute that in a nonstick skillet with some oil until your veggies are tender. And then you just pour in some uh, two cans of black beans that have been drained and rinsed. Just pour those in and you're just gonna heat it through. And while your beans are heating up, you can get your toppings or chopped veggies ready. They um, put cheese, tomato, and lettuce on their wraps. I also included cilantro and avocado. And I took a little picture of all my ingredients before I got started cooking the first time. It was all kind of cool to look at because it's all kind of stuff that I just have generally in the house. So just really easy to pull it together. Um, and then you just heat up your tortilla and you put your bean and veggie mixture in and your toppings all on it. And I've got another little picture of what it looked like before I rolled it all up. You just roll it up and enjoy. So it's very, very simple. Um, I wanted to talk about like the cheap aspect of this recipe because <clears throat> like I said, a lot of times I just have this stuff. So it's like, feels like I'm not spending any money at all making, making it. Um, but if you were to go to the store and I chose Kroger, cause that's where I part, I shop a lot on um, like how much exactly would this cost? So I sort of priced it out. The biggest thing for me is that I, use gluten-free tortillas. So those are more expensive. So um, it's gonna be even cheaper if you don't need like a specialty tortilla, but my tortillas um, for gluten-free burrito size, so a little bit larger tortilla are $10 for a pack. So it's a little on the pricey side, you do get six. So you think about six meals, so eh, it's not that bad, but it is more expensive than just a regular tortilla. But with two cans of black beans, white onion, peppers, cilantro, avocado, lettuce, cheese, cherry tomatoes, and my expensive tortillas. That all comes out to $23.47. $23.47. That's going to make four of these burrito wraps. And it's also going to have leftovers enough to make two cheese quesadillas. So ultimately, like less than $5, like considerably less than $5 a meal, even with the pricey tortillas. Um, and just in comparison, if you were to sort of buy this from our local taco joint for burritos and two quesadillas, it would be more than $50. So not knocking them at all. They have to set prices to pay the rent and to stay in business and all that, but just like shows that pulling this stuff together at home can be uh, considerably cheaper and then uh, quick. So this takes like less than 10 minutes to pull together, which has been a lifesaver for me since I found this recipe. I've made it a couple of times when it's like, there's been another kitchen disaster or like life happens and I need something really quickly and I want it to be hot and I want it to be good. And so this has been wonderful for that. And then easy. This requires absolutely zero skill. So it ticks all three of our boxes today. Very nice. Yeah. I was thinking you could um, 
you could also put it in a lettuce wrap, although those those are tricky, but you could. Um, yeah. and also, or in a bowl or with rice or any of that, right? Exactly. You don't need the tortilla really, even for this recipe. You could put it just in a bowl, some hot sauce, and you'd be all set. I love recipes like super easy to modify based on your mood like what toppings you want and what you have available it doesn't feel like you have super specific ingredients minus the beans and pepper and onion but like I love that where if you're in the mood for you can throw on and it can make it work so sounds great yep definitely a good one for that for sure um Beth tell us what you chose this week Okay, I chose uh, from Elizabeth High School's cookbook called Come On Over. She had a dish called Egg Roll in a Bowl. And I really liked this cookbook a lot. I had to turn it in, um, but there are a lot of yummy recipes in it. I called for a pound of ground meat, which I, it could be a uh, sausage, beef or turkey. I, I used, uh, pork each time. And the most recent time I used uh, some pretty, uh, like a organic chorizo. Uh, so that was nice. Anyway, it also calls for six cups of coleslaw mix or cabbage, chopped cabbage. Um, and it calls for green cabbage. I used, uh, actually what we did this past summer or fall was chopped up a whole bunch of our cabbage and blanched it and had it in the freezer. So some of it's purple, so I'll show you. It looks pretty with purple. Anyway, some uh, garlic, soy sauce, toasted sesame oil, and, and then uh, some herbs are optional. Um, I thought it looked, it tastes good with at least a couple of the uh, cilantro and basil is what I use. They also, she suggested mint. Anyway, you cook up the meat, you don't drain the fat, you toss the coleslaw or the you know, cabbage in there. You add your garlic, um, cook that down. And then like, if it's coleslaw, it'll cook super quickly. Um, then your uh, soy sauce, uh, your oil and chopped herbs, boom, that's it. It's good. Um, it's, it's really, it's a good back pocket uh recipe like that and actually your bean stuff too is like you could really just anytime but mm -hmm. um but yeah i have been so pleased with when we had so much uh, uh cabbage this past summer into the fall we didn't know what we were going to do with it and it's really great to have it available i love that i always have leftover cabbage and i'm like what what do i do with this so any recipe like this that sounds amazing to use that up that's that's great I'll definitely do this good yeah yeah it sounds super super good do you put it on top do you eat it as is or or do you consider it like a topping for like something or do you eat it as is we we ate it as is um you know my husband was trying to find um uh those little crunchy I forget what they're called now that you get Asian, you know, on top of Asian food, little, but we didn't have those, but it, I mean, I think it would have been a nice, or even wonton, I was just gonna say wonton, wonton yeah. but those little, you know, they're like skinny little, I don't remember. I don't know what they are either. Um, uh, it doesn't matter. They tasted really good. And uh, it was very good as a leftover. I had my son try it out when he visited me and he wolfed it down. So it, it says it makes four servings um she also uh makes this as indicates that it's a good uh lunch so you can just make it and it's you can serve it at room temperature so it's a good thing to pack yeah so um without further ado elizabeth let's hear what you made this time sure so i actually modified a recipe i got from the food blog slash website serving dumplings um, I like that website a lot and I cook from there with some frequency. Um, this one was, the recipe is called Thai coconut salmon curry, but I modified it because salmon to me is not cheap. Um, 
So I uh, actually ended up using um, chicken breast, but you could certainly um, skip the protein altogether or use tofu if you wanted. Um, but this is a really simple curry recipe. Um, you start out by browning the, or basically cooking the chicken um, in some olive oil and adding some cumin and red pepper flakes, scoop it out, put it on a plate, and then you saute some minced ginger and garlic, sliced onion, um, just kind of get that nice and soft. Then you throw in a chopped bell pepper and a chopped bok choy um, and let those soften. And then add a small thing of tomato paste and um, it calls for a small thing of um, the like store brand or not store brand, but the thing you like green curry paste that you would buy at the store, but you could also use your own spices if you had those. I think it just depends if you wanted to make it, if you have all the spices, it might be less expensive to just spice it yourself. But if you don't, it might be less expensive to just buy the, the little jar, which is not, it's not super expensive. And then you pour in two cans of coconut milk, um, add the chicken back in, stir it all together, um, add a couple tablespoons of peanut butter, um, and then you top it, uh, you pour it over, put it on rice. So most of these things, as Katie said, I had at home, garlic, onions, ginger are all things that I just have and are not super expensive. Um, the main things that I had to buy for this were the bell pepper and bok choy, the chicken breast, which was not very expensive, and then the coconut milk, um, which um, I can often find 10 for 10 uh, at the store at Kroger. So like to do that when I can. Um, and it was really good, really easy. It's one pan. Um, so you, you know, you brown the chicken first and then take it out and put it back in. So I love one pan recipes, one dish to wash. It's great. Um, there were some options to top it with some herbs and I actually topped it with basil. I would typically do cilantro, but I happen to have basil. You could skip the herbs entirely, top it with what you have. That just kind of adds a little bit of brightness to it. Um, yeah, and then you serve it over rice, which I always have around. So um, the whole thing took about 20 minutes to throw together. And um, it was quite good, quite filling, nice and warming for a winter day. And um, yeah, I'd make it again. Um, it's like super filling. I think coconut milk is so filling. So uh, it's good for leftovers too, because it made a fair amount and like one bowl was plenty for me. So kept for the next day. And yeah, that was it. Sounds good. Yeah, it does. And I love, love the tip of replacing salmon in a recipe with chicken. I just never would have occurred to me, like as simple as it is, just like I'll often flip past a recipe that might sound good to me, but I'm like, oh, it's got salmon in it. Either A, yeah, it's expensive, um, or B, like I'm cooking for somebody who doesn't like fish. So that's awesome. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, you know, it depends too on the recipe. Obviously, if like the fish is the total main main focus maybe it doesn't work but for something like this where it's just I'm sure the flavors are some are different because you don't have that fishy flavor but it was I don't think it mattered for this you know I mean it was probably slightly different than the recipe writer intended but it was still really good so in something like this it was a good substitution awesome well done yeah cool. well if there's nothing else I will uh outro us here and uh Thank you to those who watched for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about. And do feel free to share your own in the comments. Uh, join us next time on Recipe Share and we will be talking about rad root veggies. We look forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing and thanks for watching. Recipe Share, Recipe Share. Share a little recipe